Over about the last 15 years, a growing body of work has established the existence of temporal hierarchies in the brain. This includes animal studies, computational modeling, and also neuroimaging experiments in humans using naturalistic stimuli. In both cortex and the hippocampus, regions that have tighter links to primary uh, sensory cortex have a tendency to integrate information over shorter time windows, and higher level association areas tend to integrate it over longer time windows. Also, higher level areas have a tendency to encode information that is relevant to the broader sensory and semantic context. And this body of findings collectively has raised challenging questions regarding the extent to which simple computational principles, such as temporal hierarchy and prediction-based learning, might be used to explain apparently qualitative functional divisions across the brain. We're proposing a new avenue for investigating these questions. In our approach, we will examine the learning process as humans are exposed to sequences of artificial stimuli that are structured at both slow and fast temporal scales. We'll use this to map the encoding of temporal contingencies at different scales in both cortex and the hippocampus. Importantly, through the use of artificial stimulus sequences, we're better able to control for the types of processes that humans may be engaging in while they're exposed to the stimulus streams. This project has behavioral, computational modeling, and neuroimaging components, but today I'll simply be highlighting one key result from our computational modeling work. If you'd like to hear more about the project in general, please stop by our poster. We trained a multi-layer recurrent neural network to predict the next image in a sequence of images. And if you care about alternative model architectures and how they compare, please stop by our poster. The stimulus stream consisted of triplets of images. The first image in each triplet is known as the context image. And that image is particularly important because it would define the um, structured order information for the entire block of, each, of images. Depending on the identity of the context image, the third image in each triplet might be swapped with that in a different triplet. And this was known as the low level order assignment of the context. Additional context images would be interspersed between the triplets to further establish the current context, and triplets would be displayed multiple times within each block. Lastly, there were two distinct sets of triplets. One set of triplets would appear in the first half of the block. A separate set of triplets would appear in the second half of the block. Depending on the identity of the context image, which set of triplets was displayed first would change, and this is known as the high-level order assignment of the context. Once the model was trained, we examined patterns of activity in response to each of the context images in isolation at each of the three different recurrent layers in the network. In particular, we wanted to see whether the model would be grouping context images based on shared low-level or high-level order assignment. And we predicted that shallower network layers would be more sensitive to the low-level order assignment, whereas deeper network layers would group context images based on their high-level order assignment. And here's what we found. Here are displayed the mean dissimilarity matrices for each of recurrent layers 1, 2, and 3 of the network. And beneath each dissimilarity matrix across the eight context images, you can see the corresponding distribution of Pearson correlations uh, for 50 different model instances between the layer dissimilarity matrix and each of the low-level and high-level order information templates. So as you can see, as you move from shallower to deeper layers in the network, there is an increase in sensitivity to high-level order information. Also, looking at layers 2 and 3 of the network, there is an apparent um, trade-off in sensitivity to low and high-level order information. These findings validate the premise of conducting a parallel set of analyses using neural data of human learners that have been exposed to similar, um, similarly structured artificial sequences. And again, we'll be using that analysis to map which brain regions are sensitive to faster or slower temporal scales. So we have shown that a standard multi-layer recurrent neural network can capture the anatomical gradient of sensitivity to different timescales. Also, we are making the argument that by using um, 
controlled stimulus sequences and paradigms like this, we can complement more naturalistic approaches and better isolate the role of temporal hierarchy in explaining observed functional differences across the brain. Please check out our poster for more modeling results, some behavioral pilot data, and our plans for a multi-session fMRI plus EEG study. Thank you.